Section 88 of A History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mukund Manikarnike, Tempe, Arizona. A History of the Inquisition of Spain, Volume 4, by Henry Charles Lee, Book 9, Chapter 2, Conclusion, Retrospect, Part 4. In addition to these secular causes of Spanish decadence, there remains to be considered another class of no less importance, those arising from clericalism, or the relations of the church to the state, and its influence on the popular character and tendencies. The accumulation of lands and wealth by the church, and especially by the religious orders, was, from an early time, a source of concern to statesmen and of complaint by the people, for the exemption from the royal jurisdiction, from military service and from taxation, claimed as imprescriptible rights by the church, weakened the power of the state and threw increased burdens upon the population. Almost all the European nations endeavoured to curb this acquisitiveness by laws of which the English statutes of Mortmain and the French Toi de Amortissement may be taken as examples. These acquisitions came from two sources, each abundantly productive, gifts or bequests and purchase the sinner unable to redeem in money the canonical penance for his sins impossible to perform would make over a piece of land and obtain absolution or if on his deathbed would bequeath a portion of his estate to be expended in masses for his soul perhaps founding a capellania for that purpose or as provision for a son who would serve as chaplain so audacious became the demands of the church on the estates of the dying that in thirteen forty eight the cortes of alcala complained that all the orders obtained from the royal chancery letters empowering them to examine all testaments whereupon they claimed all bequests made to uncertain places or persons also if there was not a bequest for each order those omitted demanded one equal to the largest in the will and they further claimed the whole estates of those who died intestate if these demands were contested they varied the heirs with litigation into a compromise alfonso promised to revoke all such letters but the black death which speedily followed brought an immense accretion of lands for the foundation of anniversaries and chaplaincies which led to lively reclamations of the cortes of valladolid in thirteen fifty one with wealth thus constantly accumulating the church or monastery would purchase lands from the laity and as these became exempt from taxation it could afford to pay more than a secular purchaser whatever thus passed into ecclesiastical possession was never alienated it remained in the grip of the dead hand which by constant accretions came to hold a large portion of the most desirable lands and thus of the wealth of the kingdom it would be tedious to recapitulate the complaints of the cortes and the devices attempted by legislation from the eleventh century onward to check this growth which was regarded as threatening the most serious evils to the nation laws were adopted only to be evaded or forgotten and the process went on a new element however was injected into the struggle when in fourteen thirty eight the cortes of madrigal made a vigorous representation to juan the second that if no remedy were applied all the best lands in the kingdom would belong to the church resulting in manifold injury to the people and the crown to which the feeble king evasively replied that he would apply to the pope hitherto spanish independence of the papacy had regarded all such questions as subject to national regulation but this utterance indicated that papal confirmation 
was beginning to be recognized as necessary in everything that affected the church this was not at once admitted for one in 1447 in response to the cortes of valladolid and by a decree of 1452 imposed a tax of 20 per cent on all purchases bequests and donations but it gradually established itself and furnished a ready answer to the vigorous representations which with growing insistence the cortes of the sixteenth century made in fifteen 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 eighteen fifteen twenty three fifteen twenty eight fifteen thirty two fifteen thirty four fifteen thirty seven fifteen thirty eight fifteen forty two fifteen forty four fifteen fifty one and fifteen seventy three this put all remedy out of the question for no pope could be expected to set limits to ecclesiastical wealth and influence from which the curia derived its revenues and the petitions of the cortes served only to emphasize the magnitude of the evil and its universal recognition by the people it was not only the progressive absorption of wealth and land that was detrimental but the corresponding increase in the numbers of the clergy regular and secular who were released from all the duties of the citizen and whose vows of celibacy aided in accelerating the diminution of the population the process continued with added vigor especially after the commencement of the seventeenth century owing partly to a wave of religious fervor which led to the founding of chapels and convents on a greater scale than ever and partly to the growing destitution forcing men to seek conventional refuge where they might at least escape starvation and inducing parents to give their sons such smattering of education as might enable them to take orders and have at least a chance to secure a livelihood free from the crushing burdens of taxation the result of this is seen in fray bleda's boast in sixteen eighteen that one-fourth of the christians of spain were priests frails or nuns and even though this is obviously an overestimate it indicates how great was the task imposed on the producing classes to support in idleness so large a portion of the population the increase was largely in the mendicant orders whose systematic begging that no one dared refuse was a grievous addition to the tithes and first fruits a single instance will illustrate this inordinate growth cardinal mendoza archbishop of toledo the third king under ferdinand and isabella stubbornly refused to allow convents to be founded in his province saying that there were already many that were injurious to the people obliged to sustain them but this ceased with his death in fourteen ninety five his biographer dr pedro de salazar penitentiary of the cathedral tells us that the city of toledo had a privilege from alfonso the tenth prohibiting the erection of convents there at that time there were six but in sixteen twenty five when he wrote these had been enlarged and numerous others had been founded so that they then occupied more than fifty royal and noble houses and more than six hundred smaller ones the disastrous influence of this on the prosperity of the place is self-evident and salazar regards this portentous development of ecclesiasticism as the chief cause of the decline in population of spain which he estimates at twenty five per cent the consulta of the council of castile in sixteen nineteen naturally included in its enumeration of the causes of national distress the foundation of so many religious houses which were filled with those attracted not by vocation but by a life of idleness while their lands were exempt from taxation in a similar mood the cortes assembled by philip the fourth on his accession made a forcible and somewhat rhetorical representation asking for measures to restrain the 
multiplication of foundations and the purchases of land, which not only diminished the Alcabalas, but in a few years would exempt all real estate from the royal jurisdiction and accumulate all taxation on the miserable poor, thus destroying the population of the provinces, for it was evident that if the clergy continued to increase as it was doing, the villages would be without inhabitants, the fields without laborers, the sea without mariners, and the arts without craftsmen. Commerce would be extinct, and marriage being despised, the world would not last for a century. At the earnest request of the kingdom, which represented that it could not support these idle multitudes or furnish soldiers for war, Urban VIII in 1634 granted a bold reforming the religious orders and suppressing some of the barefooted ones but the opposing influences were too strong and it was ineffective in sixteen seventy seven the matter was again debated including the excessive numbers of the secular clergy but action was postponed until there was a better prospect of results the recognized evils were too serious to remain thus pigeonholed and an attempt was again made in sixteen ninety one the feebleness of which demonstrates how completely the church dominated the state and could not be reformed without its own consent the king deplored the multiplication of convents and the consequent relaxation of discipline and the pope was to be asked for authority to appoint visitors with full powers the excessive increase of the secular priesthood he said was the cause of numerous disorders to cure which the pope was to be applied to for faculties enabling bishops and abbots to reduce their numbers so that all incumbents could live decently the clergy in minor orders were so numerous that their exemption from the royal jurisdiction and the public burdens was a grievous injury to the laity and the bishops were asked to limit their ordination the absorption of lands by the church was an evil which had puzzled the wisest heads in all ages many states had adopted laws regulating this but he hesitated to have recourse to such measures until statistics could be gathered and it could be decided how to reduce the numbers of the secular clergy in short the church was an old man of the sea strangling the state which lacked power to rid itself of its oppressor with the advent of the bourbons there was less tendency to this hopelessness and in seventeen thirteen the plain-spoken machanez in a report to the king presented a terrible picture of the misery and impoverishment resulting from the overgrown numbers and wealth of the clergy yet short of revolution effective remedy was impossible and philip v contended himself with a decree expressing regret that without papal assent or a concordat he could not afford general relief to his vassals while awaiting this however he severely characterized the frauds of confessors in inducing the dying to impoverish their heirs such testators were declared not to be of free will their bequests were invalid and scriveners drawing them were threatened with condign punishment much of this evil could have been averted had the salutary reforms prescribed by the council of trent been enforced but they had been a dead letter at least in spain in seventeen twenty three however philip induced the spanish bishops to supplicate innocent the thirteenth on the subject resulting in a constitution in which he embodied at great length the tridentine decrees as to restricting ordinations and the number of religious in convents it was a tribute to the capacious learning rather than to the consistency of machinas that the regular orders employed him to draw up 
a memorial to the king protesting against the enforcement of the papal decree in which he lavished praises on them and argued vigorously against any restriction on numbers beyond the capacity of support this however was but a lawyer's argument for a client and did not prevent him in memorials to philip v about seventeen forty and to fernando the sixth in seventeen forty six from expressing his true opinions as to the evils which were a main cause of spanish distress more than half the land held in mortmain and exempt from public burdens and the immense number of those who in place of being good laborers were bad priests wandering around as beggars to the scandal of religion while the overgrown religious orders were useless consumers living on the rest of the nation end of section eighty eight recording by mukund manikarnike tempi arizona m dot com